So first let's go to Genesis 45. Genesis 45. And Genesis is in the first book of the Bible. Genesis 45. We'll start with the man, Joseph. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from him. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept loud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brother, brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself. But he sought me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life for these two years, as the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be hearing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a prosperity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord over all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hasty and go up to my father and say unto him, Thus says thy son Joseph, God, has made me lord over all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near unto me, you and your brethren, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your heads, and all that you have. Let's go a bit backward to chapter 37, so that I pick my anchor scripture. Let me read verse 23, chapter 37. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and baum and mur, going to carry it down to Egypt. Let's, let's, let's stop there. If you want the rest of the story, you read at home, or you watch the movie, Joseph. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, speak to your people. Anoint my vocal cords. Anoint my mind. And speak through me. I may add an vessel, but you are our heavenly treasure. Speak to your people, Lord, and take someone to the next level. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before I start preaching, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, God answers prayer. I'm not feeling you. Exactly. Exactly. God answers prayer. You have to get it your bone marrow that God answers prayer. All viewers on Facebook, YouTube, ABJ TV, I want you to know that God answers prayer. God 
answers prayer. Matthew 7 from verse 7. Ask and you will be given. Who is speaking here? I can't hear you. Who is speaking here? Not on this pulpit in Matthew 7 verse 7. Who is speaking here? What does, who is Jesus? Now, what is God saying? Ask. And what happens after you ask? There are others who are getting shocked like. <laughs> they think it's metaphysics. <laughs> it's resonance. Right. God answers prayer. We have to start again. Tell yourself, God answers prayer. For the last time, Now a shout that kills COVID. God answers prayer. I who created the ear, will I not hear? I who created the eye, will I not see? God answers prayer. If you don't understand that, getting into the closet will be a religious ritual. more than a communication with God. Prayer is communicating with God. When God is speaking, he is government. God speaks from a position of government. What do you think when I say government? I know you are thinking of parliament cabinet. God has no cabinet. There's no parliament. He consults no one. If God needed consultation, I would not be a pastor here. That's why he can bless people you don't like. So, when God is speaking, his government, unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the governments shall be upon his shoulder. So he is the governor of governments. He is government. So when God is speaking, he speaks from a position of sovereignty. He is the sovereign God. We prayed, we fasted, we gave. We repented, we confessed, but it did not happen. Sovereign. Sovereign decision. It's when you pray, you believe, you fast, you forgive, you, do, you observe all the rules, and it does not happen. Sovereignty. The sovereign God has spoken. He has done it. His work. So when God is speaking, he speaks from a position of government. And when men is interpreting the word of God, they interpret in a position of religion. Religion is man's opinion added on God's word. Should we tithe or not tithe? Religion. Should women wear trousers in church or wear long robes? Religion. Should we wear jeans in Shona Masatan? Should we wear my Satan or not? Religion. Should our youths wear ribbed jeans or faded jeans or not? Religion. Should you get that haircut um, sign of rebellion? What do you call it? Most South African women, they like that haircut mohawk they put on a mohawk and a line here and when your wife put on that one are you in trouble <laughs> you don't need the god of malachi or habakkuk or the god you need the god of abraham isaac jacob moses elijah not the small prophets our guy <laughs> because that's rebellion now resistance 
But now in South Africa, you want to be Miss South Africa, you put on bald. Bald head, Zuda. You don't watch the news. Every black girl who is becoming Miss South Africa is putting on Zuda, bald head. The one who, is Miss, who was Miss Universe, bald, right? The one who won recently, bald. You want to win modeling now, you put on bald head. But bald head may attract a spiritual husband. <laughs> because sure, bald head, madam. And in South Africa, they then put the big earrings like <laughs> Zulu. No, if you like it, you can have it. The Bible says, man looks at the outward appearance. First Samuel 16 from verse 7. But God looks at the heart. So religion is when you are saying, should women put on bowed head or buy Brazilian hair? Should women put on synthetic hair or 100%? That's religion. Should women preach or not? That's religion. Religion is human opinion over God's word. Parliament makes legislation. The executive makes it a bill of law. The police enforces it. And the judiciary interprets it. So the big deal is with the judiciary, the interpreter. Because interpretation is relative. It depends with who is interpreting. If you are my cousin... And I'm putting on the wig. And I have the hammer. And the prosecutor is laying facts. Then I see a loophole in the constitution that could make you walk free. You may walk free. Because it's relative. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me. This may change your life. I, I took three days to come to where I am now. The Bible is the heavenly legislation. It's the constitution. It's the law. The writer is the Holy Spirit. The author is the Holy Spirit. The writer are the patriarchs. The author is the Holy Spirit. The writer, the patriarchs. Every scripture is God breathed and inspired. That's what God says through Timothy. So the patriarchs wrote but the author was the Holy Spirit. Now, this legislation of 1,080 chapters and 66 books is enforced by angels or demons depending on the laws you are breaking and the laws you are obeying. When it's enforced, the prosecutor against you is Satan, the accuser of brethren. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. And the defense or your advocate is Jesus. And the judge or the chief justice is the father. You have an advantage if you take advantage of it. Because no matter how many accusations Satan will lay against you, your father, Jesus, is your advocate. Advocate means standing on behalf of. And the father of the advocate is God, Jehovah. Then the interpreter of the legislation is the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit who lives in me is interpreting, Jesus, the righteousness of God, is taking my place. And the Father 
who interpret the law and pass a decree, I'm winning. I win before it starts. It's all set up in my favor. But the challenge is the chief justice, God, is righteous and just. He does not lie. So since he does not lie, if you are in the lie and he is the chief justice, the Bible says he elevated his word above him. He's going to honor his word although he loves you. Which means God does not hate you when you are on your way to hell. He loves you to hell but he can do anything about it because you made the decision. So, Jesus, in the constitution of the Holy Bible, according to Matthew chapter number 7 from verse 7, ask and you will receive. Can I ask God for more weight? Yes. Can I ask God to lose weight? Sisters, you can say a big yes. <laughs> right. Then, 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 that's not the Holy Spirit when I throw a joke. It's, it's just my hermeneutic flaw. It's Bible school. These are the Bible school tricks. Okay. Look, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Ask and you receive. That's what the book says. Then he says, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. So it's ask, seek, and knock. Then he says, which one among you, if your son asks you for a fish, you give him a snake? And which one among you, if your son asks you for bread, you give him a stone? If you people who are evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much will your heavenly father? give unto you. So he's saying, if a muroi can breastfeed a baby, if a tzotzi can buy clothes for his son, what about God? Who is righteous? So my question then is, why am I asking? Why am I seeking? Why am I knocking and not receiving? And Africa should ask that question from Cape to Cairo. Because if there's a continent that they've asked, the melanin, the black man who ask until there's no asking left. Because the black man needs water from his tap. The black man needs food, cooking oil, salt, firewood, gasoline and if you are a black African woman may God have mess on you you need to ask deliverance from some in-law deliverance from some side chick deliverance from some side hen they are side chicks then they are side hen then they are side off layers and they are side ostriches <laughs> <laughs> but everyone, even even an ostrich, an ostrich is like, I, I'm a side chick. <laughs> now, I'm serious, yeah. Serious as cancer. Why? Am I asking and not receiving? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Many girls are getting married. And some of them, I know them. And I know they are not going to be good wives. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about your questions. Hmm? <laughs> And you know this one is not going to be a good wife. 
But you, they are running away instead of coming. Why am I asking for just enough money for my family? And there is somebody who you are giving more than enough. And God, you are not even going to test none of it. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. But this one, you are giving lots of money. You are not going to get any of it. Yet I'm just asking for enough. Have you ever asked yourself a question, why am I asking, but God is not answering? Why am I asking for the right character in the right body and in the right face? Then I get the right face, the right, face, the right body, and no character. Or the character, but the body is the body of Christ. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself that question? <laughs> Why am I asking? But God is not answering. If you don't ask yourself that question, one day your prayer light will go out. Your wife, your wife my wife is spooky. Spooky. I fasted, I sowed seed for the spirit of my Maria to come upon you. But now, aku popota ne churungu. She's now arguing in English. From bad to worse. How do you respond when you are a black man and mkaza aku popota ne churungu? Calling you dude. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> what, what do you do? When you are fasting and praying, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, at least your husband was lying, lying to you was some form of fear and respect. Now he's answering the phone on your bed. But I fasted three days, three nights, Esther fast. 21 days, Daniel fast. 40 days fasting for probation. 100 days. 10 days in January, Sayoja. Then I followed AFM 30 days. Then I, I, I sowed first fruit. Then I gave tithe and tithe of tithe. And I've given seed. And I've forgiven people who can't say sorry. Why am I asking? And I'm not being answered. It was a migraine headache. Now it's a tumor. Why am I asking? And I'm not being answered. That is the question we are answering today. Prayer court. Prayer court. Let's go into it and get practical and pragmatic about Christianity because the biggest disease in church right now is not sin. That's not the biggest disease. Because you heard it before you even came to church. That's not the bigger problem. The biggest disease in church right now is an answered prayer. An answered prayer is the biggest challenge. The reason why South African Airways had its most paying route, Nigeria, seconded by Zimbabwe. South African Airways has the most productive route, Nigeria, Lagos, Muhammad Mtula Airport. Number two, Harare Jobek. Because they strip us dry, you know, a local flight. They strip us dry. Then they call us another province of South Africa. Why is Nigeria their most profitable route? Someone wants to meet Papa and receive a big prayer because he has been praying and his own prayer was not being answered. Why were a beautiful girl like you look at yourself, look at yourself without a mask? <laughs> Why would a beautiful girl like you 
go to Masowe. Put on Sowe, the white coat. Change your name to Madzimai, but you are 19. Then the toilet is latrine. The church is in the bush. The prophet has five wives. You may be the sixth. And you are getting water. You don't know where it was fetched. It's from a, it's, if it's from a tap, may God help you. <laughs> it's not LG, ZLG, it's not Schweppes. Don't even know the hygiene level. And the cruel ones who add milk, eggs, and yogurt in that water. You know, the devil, Satan, is a Satanist. He's a Satanist. Egg, raw egg, milk, coffee, butter, yogurt, plus water. Drink this prayer seven days. <laughs> but why would someone go to those lengths? Because a prayer is not answered. A prayer is not answered. So some churches are clever. They discovered that the problem of unanswered prayer is too prevalent in churches. So they wrote prayers down. So you get there and you start reciting the prayer from the book. They say pray this one only. <laughs> All those Boas prayers, leave them. It might not happen and you backslide. Pray these ones only. Then you start reading the prayers from a book. Reading prayers from a book. Or some, they just say, pray Matthew 6 verse 9 only. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So that you can't have reference that I prayed for this and I did not get this. So this is a question that most people have and they can't even ask it. Why am I fasting so much and praying and my son was on marijuana, now he has graduated, he's on drugs. My daughter, he had boyfriends, now she graduated, she's pregnant at 16. And it's difficult for a pastor to answer that, that, that question. Because when it's asked, you feel the pressure of a demand for power that you might probably not be sufficient enough to give. Yet the Bible never said you grow in power. It said you grow in grace. Unto him who does exceeding abundantly above what we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is in us. The power is there. But to access or untap the power, that's the question. And the only way you untap the power is when you pray. So we need now to get to a place where prayers can be answered. Now, I'm going to go down a short journey with you over the issue of prayer so that between today and 31 December, you have some prayer answered. Are you ready? Fasten your seat belt. Then let's go. All right, first let's go to the text that I've read. Joseph receives dreams from God. He did not ask God for the dreams. They just came. The dreams are saying you are going to be the leader of your family. Your father is a prince. His name is Israel. His sons 
are supposed to be princes because his, your father is a prince. But you are going to be the leader of all the princes, including your father. Which was a, a difficult revelation because God is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Full stop. He doesn't go beyond that. And number two, listen carefully, God names Israel after Jacob, not after Joseph. And Joseph have, hasn't yet received the unction on Abraham because it's on his father. But the moon, the star, and the sun, and 11 stars are bowing down to him. Now, have you ever got a dream from God and you never asked? Has God ever sent a word that you are bringing deliverance to your family but you never asked him? Has God ever called you to be a pastor but you never asked him to be a pastor? Has God ever called you to serve in a church yet you never asked him? Have you ever been called to cast out demons and you never even fasted or asked God for the gift? But it just came. That's what happened to Joseph. Now, God, if you are giving me something I didn't ask for, it surely has to be easy. But there is no easy way to destiny. There's no easy way. Because, because when God himself came in the form of man and became the man, Jesus... 100% son of man, 100% son of God, he struggled to execute his own law on earth because he, God, was now in the flesh. Because even angels themselves, when they came in the flesh in Genesis 6, they struggled to contain the holiness of heaven and perverted with the daughters of men. That's why we have been elevated above angels. Because it's not easy to be in the flesh and please God. God, God is spirit and them that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. But father, a morph who gave birth to a chihera, who gave birth to Enzo, who gave birth to uh, a, 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 a Enzo, little Shinzo, who got a Ziva and got back to a Masisiba. And Masisiba means water spirit. I'm a territory. When I bring men in my territory. Where I can swim. And he can drown. I deal with him. Now I'm coming from that lineage. It's following my bloodline. It's following my flesh. It creates a certain atmosphere. That programs me and my children to fail. Now, but you are saying I must worship you in spirit. God, I sleep eight hours. I, I need breakfast. I need lunch. I need supper. And God, I need ba a, a bathing soap. I need clothes on. I need transport. I need money. And to get money, I have to work eight hours. So I worked, worked eight hours. I slept eight hours. And I only have eight hours for you. And the remaining eight hours, I have to watch TV, read the news, be with my children, be a husband or a wife. I have to prepare for tomorrow. I have to iron my clothes. And you are saying, I must worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, God understands this, that even he himself, when he came in the flesh, he struggled to execute his will. When God came in the flesh, he prayed. How did he pray? Father, all things are possible with you but i wish i wish if some scriptures could be removed from the bible because god i know it's possible for you to remove some scripture from the bible but nevertheless your will not mine meaning god in the flesh struggled to execute his own his own assignment so if god himself is struggling to execute his assignment what about me Come from Chi Town, where poor people called me poor. Oh Lord, I come from the backside of the backside of the earth, 
which is called Africa. Lord, an African is born disadvantaged. He has to bail out someone for 20 years before he even starts his own journey. When he marries one woman, he may marry the whole generation. When she marries one man, she may marry the whole clan. Oh Lord, it's not easy to be in the flesh and still execute your duties. All I need is one prayer answered. And why are my prayers not being answered? The Bible says, and now we have a high priest who can be touched. He's accessible. That's what Paul is saying in Hebrew. He's saying the high priest we have now is accessible. So let's enter his courts with boldness so that we receive mercy and grace in the time of need. But Lord, it has been January to October. Where is grace in my time of need? When my husband is going crazy. When, when, when home has become a prison. When money has declared war against me. How then, O oh Lord, can I save you when I don't have only one prayer I can account for answered? So Joseph is chosen by God and is favored. And right now I'm looking at a thousand favored people right now. But being favored by God does not eliminate struggle. You can be favored and your brethren can be jealous of you. You can be favored and King Saul may put a mark on your head. Favored people, there's a woman who was favored to bring revival to Samaria. She had been married five times. The one she was with was not a husband. It's not easy to be favored. Hail Mary. You are the favored one. You are favored above all women. You know, if you are favored above all others, can I dissect this? If you are favored above all others, it means favor is not common. Because if it, wasn't, if it was common, then it's not favor. Anything that can be found in everyone and everywhere is not favor at all. So Mary, you are favored. You have something peculiar that no other woman has or will ever have. But what happened to the favored Mary? The favored Mary had an encounter with angel Gabriel. Gabriel does not stay on earth. He returned to heaven. Then Mary saw her tummy growing and her cycle ceased and she's just 16. Now Joseph was betrothed to her, meaning the moha or dowry had been paid. They were waiting for the wedding. And now he hasn't touched her. And the law says if she get touched by another man, there's a death penalty. Yeah, betrothed thou should cast the first stone and she must be stoned to death. And her time is growing. And God didn't tell the pastor about it. God didn't tell her father about it. So the time is growing and, and Joseph began to hear the rumor from the choir that Sister Mary is pregnant. Mary has been loyal, has been faithful, and he can't believe it. He can't believe it. It can't be Mary. So he defends his cheek with his life. He says, no, 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 no. Mary goes home before five. She takes me a message every morning. She sends me a location pin wherever she travels. We do video chat calls. We do video calls, video app calls, and I see her with nobody. It's not my Mary. She's pure. He defends her. But the challenge then is, after the whole church knew about it and he was the last to know, because the victim is always the last to know, he took Mary and said, sweetheart, 
I've discovered a conspiracy against you. There are girls in church ganging up against you, including your friends. And Mary's like, tell me, honey. And he says, I'll take you for pizza. Let's go to Galilee by the sea. Let's go to Capernaum. Buy some fish from the fishermen. Bride the fish and have some pizza or a fish party. So they're at the restaurant and they're talking. Honey, take care about the accusations. I'll love you till death do us apart. And Mary's crying and saying, no, honey, the accusations are true. And fear hits Joseph's spine. And his stomach starts, starts spinning and cringing inward. And he thinks it's a joke and says, honey, I know you have, you have, you have, you, you, you have an Englishman humor. You have a British dry humor. You are, you are far from being Mr. Bean. May you please try another joke? We're talking about pregnancy here out of wedlock. And Mary starts crying. And says, oh, sweetheart, it's real. I didn't know how to tell you. And Joseph, Joseph can't handle it. He's shaking. He's unraveling. He's scared. He has just caught his wife red-handed in confession. He's still having a, gleam, a, 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 a glimpse of hope that it may not be true. And he's like, honey... It could be a stomach cyst or a hernia. It could be a, 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 a hormonal imbalance playing with your hormones. Talk to me. Sweetheart, I'm nauseating. I have morning sickness. My tummy is now hard in the inside. I don't need a scan. I know that I know that I am pregnant. And Joseph says, get behind me, Satan. Who did this? And the, the, the teenage girl is not a good liar because she's Mother Mary. So she says, let me tell you the truth. One day I was washing dishes and I was by myself. As I was washing breakfast dishes, a man came and he says, my name is Gabriel. You remember the one who Daniel wrote about? And he says, okay, go on. He says, that one. Then he's like, how, what does he look like? She says, he looks like you, but he's more handsome. And his eyes are brighter. And he was dressed all white. And uh, his garment was more expensive than yours. That's all I can remember. What did he say? He said, you are favored above all women. And he's like, favored women are not found in Nazareth. This is Apple, Epworth. Overspill, not Borodell. What are you talking about? This is Manyame, phase two, land infuse, wetland. What are you talking about? Favored women don't come from Nazareth. This is Malawi, Lilongwe, Machawa, Nazareth. It's not in New York, it's not Dubai. What are you talking about? You think I'm stupid? You think just because I grew up a church boy, I'm a Bambi? Who did this? Who is Gabriel? And says, honey, it's Gabriel. Do you mean the Gabriel, the guy at the keyboard? No. What Gabriel talking about? The one Daniel wrote about. The one who fought with the prince of Persia. And says, all right, what did he say? He says, I'm favored. And I'm going to fall pregnant but not by you. He said the Holy Spirit will come upon me. Then Joseph remembers the Old Testament and the Old Testament speaks of no one called the Holy Spirit. It speaks of Yahweh. Then the question is, who is the Holy Spirit? Then said the Holy Spirit is God. How can he be God? God is Elohim Adonai. What spirit are you talking about? Is it an evil spirit? He says, no, that one is holy. What happened when he came upon you? He said, I felt something. I think it's the anointing. And it settled in my womb. And after that, I stopped lying. Because the baby doesn't lie. I stopped lasting because the baby doesn't last. 
I, I forgave Miriam and Naomi, the girls who were gossiping about me in the choir, because the baby doesn't gossip, he's the prince of truth. And I started loving the Bible. I've read Genesis to Malachi seven times in three months. I don't understand the level of revelation on me. Even priest Caiaphas can't match me. There is an anointing over me, Joseph. I do not understand. I'm dreaming of angels. I'm seeing seraphims and cherubims worshiping what's inside my tummy. I'm confused. I knew you are my last hope. Don't desert me. And Joseph is in shock. And he goes like, all right, darling, uh, I'll talk to Dr. Chirisa. He may, he may understand. I'll pay him. I've supplied some coffee tables and some chairs for my carpentry business. So Dr. Chirisa may, 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 may take you in his psychiatric unit. I know you have taken in too much stress. Do, do, calm down, honey. I know this my he has it. It's called schizophrenia stage A. And Mary says, honey, I, I didn't know you could betray me like this. I, I would rather die. If God wants me to die, I'll die. If it means killing myself, I'll kill myself. But I saw him, okay, confess to me, I love you, I'll keep it a secret, and I'll call the baby mine. Did you sleep with, with Gabriel? No. He looked like a man and looked like a woman. He's an angel. He's asexual. He has no gender. He's genderless. And the spirit of God came upon me and he disappeared and said after six months, he said, my, my only confirmation is to go to Auntie Elizabeth because he said she's pregnant. Auntie Elizabeth is 75 and she's barren. Are you sure you're okay? I'm calling your aunt. And Joseph calls for an indaba. He calls the pastor from the synagogue. And the Pharisees came. And the Sadducees and the scribes came. And the rulers of the synagogue came. Then the auntie sat here. Mama here. Daddy here. And Joseph said, I have a serious allegation. My wife is pregnant. She says she met a man called Gabriel. The one who fought the prince of Persia in Babylon. And she says after he spoke, something called the Holy Spirit set upon him. And he's carrying God. Because he's saying God has a son. And, but he didn't tell me the wife of God. He said, Elohim Adonai has a son, and that son is in his womb, and she's still a virgin. So may you please test here, then we see what happened. Then they asked Mary, are you pregnant? And says, yes. So there's need, no need for testing. I am your father. Pack your bags and leave. Now. And says, daddy, I'll, pay, I'll pack and leave. I brought you reproach. But let me go to Aunt Elizabeth, and if she's not pregnant, maybe I'll kill myself. Because I know I've been deceived. And the girl packed their bags. And Nazareth was a farming town, and if you go to Israel, they will tell you by Jesus' time, it only had 11 homesteads and an average of 200 people. So I'm sure by end of day, everyone was talking about it. And the slave queen who Joseph had broken her heart by disappointing and choosing the yellow bone instead of hair or the chocolate beauty instead of the yellow bone, she began to hope again. And rumors were flying around and Joseph's parents and relatives told her and said, Son, Proverbs chapter number 7 says, Get away from the wayward woman. For all she has slain a strong man. Proverbs 6 verse 24 to 26. Do not be 
taken by the good looks of the wayward woman. Do not allow her charms to take over your heart. But by the reason of a strange woman, a man is reduced to a crust of bread and an adulteress who prey upon his precious life. Stay away from her. A man with a thousand wives warned you. Who else can warn you better than our king with a thousand wives? Stay away from Mary. If you go to Mary, you are not my son. I disown you. Mary should be killed. Pastor, what do you say? And the pastor says, let her go and take Elizabeth. If the old woman is not pregnant, then she's guilty. Joseph cast the first stone and she's killed. And Joseph being a noble man, not wanting to disgrace his wife, he took Mary aside and says, Mary, I've changed my mind. I love you so much. Let's lie and say it's mine. And Mary says, no. This pregnancy is not for eating daka or churu or derere. This one does not lie. Elohim Adonai is here. Thou, let there be light. He's in me. He's inside. Then he says, but I give you Basfe. Go to Jerusalem. Meet Elizabeth. Come back and give me the answer. So she took a donkey. And the girl is crying. And Gabriel is not coming back. Michael is not coming back. He came once. He left. The time he started growing. And Maria is going to Jerusalem. She's crying. She didn't know that the Pope who have one billion Catholics calling her mother. She didn't know that. She didn't know that we'll be preaching about her. She didn't know that. She didn't know that when I get to heaven, one of the first people I want to book an appointment to see is her. She didn't know that. So she's going on a donkey through, through the hills. And Jerusalem is, is, is mountainous and pregnancy hurts heights. And she's vomiting and throwing and the woman is crying and breaking down and all love is lost. And favor has messed up her life. Because you can be favored and lose your loved one. You can be favored and lose your job. You can be favored and get married to the devil. You can be favored and your husband is a liquid debtor can be favored and your boyfriend is a terminator because being favored doesn't mean you don't go through agony favor is expensive she's hoping the glory of a messiah but she's receiving the persecution of unwanted pregnancy they're calling a prostitute they're calling a queen bee. They're calling a slay queen. They're calling her all sorts of names. She's on Facebook. She has, she, has, she has crushed internet. Instagram is a wash. YouTube is a wash. She's making hits. She's being cartooned. The bus stop crew is throwing skits on her. The pastor is quoting her as an example of deception. She's the example in all sermons. And all girls have been summoned for a youth camp meeting. Because Mary has just thrown a shocker. And she gets to Jerusalem. And she, she leaves the donkey. And she's shaking in fear. Because she knows auntie doesn't tolerate nonsense. And uncle is the high priest. So she, she's going to the high priest and, 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 and she opens the door and she doesn't even have a small lamp or, or a goat to give as a sin offering to the high priest for the accusation she's carrying. But lo and behold, auntie came out and she's six months pregnant with John the Baptist Elijah to come and through her, sin, her, her thintentious, thintentious tissue, membrane of her belly fabric, Jesus inside Mary, her niece, releases the Holy Ghost. 
because the bible says in luke chapter one john the baptist will be baptized with the holy ghost from his mother's womb and now the baby jesus who will baptize with the holy ghost and fire releases the holy spirit through a sententious tissue and hit the belly button of her aunt and sinks into into the womb and and sets on the on the fetus and the fetus is filled with the holy ghost and now and now the high priest six months back called zechariah doubted gabriel when gabriel said elijah will come in the form of john in your 75 year old wife and when he doubted the voice of the priest was taken by gabriel and says you shall not be able to talk until this comes to pass because if a priest is preaching doubt who then will believe then his voice according to leviticus that if the high priest is incapacitated or die in the holy place because of sin his firstborn son will take his position and the voice is given to the firstborn son in his mother's womb and become the first prophet to prophesy in his mother's womb and his mother begin to speak by the baby and says here comes the mother of my lord and mary gets a human confirmation for the first time and for the first time she enjoys favor and auntie says i've been hiding myself because at 75 god has shamed me i'm carrying a baby and it's going to make way for yours and Mary's comforted. And after she's comforted, she leaves and comes back to Joseph and says, Joseph, go to my auntie. Here's the letter she wrote. And this is the seal from the high priest. I'm going to the synagogue. The high priest said, all the Pharisees are under me. I'm the priest. So leave Mary alone. No stoning, no persecution. And you know what they said? She bribes the high priest. Or she offered him something. Since she's already loose as we know. It was not easy. Because your battle. Determines. What you carry. Hear me Zimbabwe and hear me well. Your battle. Determines. What you carry. Is there Nelson Mandela in the house. 27 years in Robin Island. Your battle determines what you carry is there hatma gandhi in the house your battle determines what you carry is there david in the house before goliath your battle determines what you carry has he been beating you up has he been taking your money and spending it on another woman your battle determine what you carry have you been preaching but people are leaving your church for some strange prophet next door your battle determines what you carry and mary comes back and she says the high priest has written a seal touch not my anointed and do my prophetess no harm she's expecting the whole world to worship her but she receives head joseph receives dreams then his brother strips his coat of many colors throws him into a deep and dry pit so she is in dry places and you know what dry place means matthew 12 verse 43 when a demon is casted out where does he go he goes to dry places he sent where demons are hibernating and when you are in a well all you see are walls and a dry ground the only place you look at for help is up a deep dry pit is a place that is narrow but it's narrow enough to squeeze you and it squeeze you enough to look only one way which is not your husband which is not the apostle or the prophet or the major prophet but god he had one way to cry to upward only have you been at a place 
where you feel the pastor will not understand your situation. Have you been at a place where you can share your pain with your own parents? Have you been at a place you can share your pain with your boyfriend? Have you been so misunderstood and abused? You can't even turn to nobody for help but God. And that is a place where prayer is answered. Prayer is answered in the narrow place. In the place where you are squeezed. And you are squeezed until you have only one thing to do. To trust God or die. Do you still have another option? God is not ready to act yet. Because real prayer. When you pray. It deals with you first. Before it brings the answer. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. And when you pray, pray like this. Our Father. What in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But, what does next verse say? But, man of God, you are a linguist. You are an Oxford or a Webster in human embodiment. My basic English says, but, tells you that forget everything that I said. It's about to be erased by what I'm about to say. If you say, he's handsome. He has broad shoulders. He has the right job and the right, and the right wallet and the right pocket. He has the right chain church. But, walk away. Jesus says, but if you do not forgive your enemies <laughs> from our father to forever and ever, you are wasting your time. Matthew 5 verse 44. It says, pray for your enemies. Have you ever prayed for your enemy? Why are prayers not answered? Jesus, in Matthew 5.44, says pray for him when he's cheating on you. Pray for her when she's gossiping and want to destroy your marriage. Pray for your enemies. I know I've just killed half of you. Then he says, and forgive them so that your father may also forgive you. Then he says in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever, everyone say whoever, whoever. believes in his heart and does not doubt, shall say to this mountain, mountain of poverty, get out, go to Indian Ocean. The Bible says nothing shall be impossible with him who believes. Then he says, therefore when you pray, believe that you have already received what you prayed for and you shall believe. Meaning, the power of prayer is not seen by the verbosity and the vocabulary or the jargon of your spiritual discourse or verbosity. The power of your prayer is not even seen by the jaw breaking of your tongues. The power of prayer is seen by the manifestation. So you may not feel anything in prayer. Because the power of prayer is not in how you are feeling. The power of prayer is in manifestation. Now he says when you pray believe that you have received what you prayed for. 
Have you ever prayed for anything? Believe that you received it the day you prayed. Believe. Believe. And he said, whatsoever. Which means if you don't have a house, you can pray for a house. Which means if you don't have a car, you can pray for a car. Which means, which means, which means, let me tell you something. I'm still in the spirit. I was at school in Mashingo and I had a teacher, an English teacher. Oh my God, that man knew English. He knew English enough. He married a Muzungu from Sweden who was on attachment here in Africa. You know, this uh, missionary African trip where doctors or teachers can come to just, to just sacrifice for Africans. So he had a very beautiful blonde hair English teacher called Miss Collett. And um, he married her. So, you know, with our inferiority complex as black people and this self black head on ourselves, South Africa, are you still there? We, 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 we sort of like give you some form of respect because you married them Zungu. So, we, we always admired the couple. And one thing that my eyes were fixated on was the Mazda 626 that he was driving. Oh, I fell in love with that car because Mrs. Collett was our teacher. And we got, we got really close because I was so quiet. I was so quiet, she took me to the headmaster thinking that I'm being abused at, at home. <laughs> So he took me to the headmaster and say, my mother saying, Amen. He say, this, this, this young man is a good student, but I think he's being abused at home. You need to probe. Something is off. He doesn't talk at all. Because I didn't know how to talk. I didn't know. So to talk like this is the anointing. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So I, I didn't know how to talk. You know, I'll be just quiet. Just quiet. But I was violent, hey. Yeah? I was violent and my sport was karate. <laughs> and my, my idol was Jean Claude Van Damme. So I, I, I admired them. So what, what she did, she asked a pass from the headmaster to take me to um, yeah, 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 her husband's father's farm. The husband was related to vice president back then. Um, I love that vice president. He, he, on the wedding, he gave us, I think, an hour, an hour speech. It was so hot. Then he gave um, a gift of pondo, two, US, two zim dollars. <laughs> and he became so famous at school, um, you know, but we loved him. We loved him. Put your hands together for the late, great hero Zender. So, so we went to the farm and I was in the 626 and I was like, ah, ma'am, so for the first time she had me talk. She said, ma'am, this is a nice car. Yeah, it smells nice too. So we got there and I was talking all the way. I was talking, overtake this car. Overtake this car. When my father is driving, no one overtakes him. You know, when you're a young child, your father beats every man in the world. Your father will beat everyone. Because the way he kicked you was so hard. There is no way another man will beat your father. So, but my dad, when my, my dad is driving, he's piuche. No one overtakes him. He's 4-4. No one overtakes him. And, but that 4-4 was more pushed than driven. <laughs> no one overtakes him. So, I was so excited. And we got to the farm and we came back. And from, since that day, whenever I was... I saw the car. I didn't pray. I always said, this is going to be my first car. This is going to be my first car. This is, I didn't even want to say a Mercedes, BMW, that car. This is going to be my first car. This is going to be my first car. This is, so I always made a laugh because I always say, uh, because I always invited, when I became the scripture union leader, 
I always invited her and Mrs. Maiden, my math teacher, those two white women to, to come to, to my class. So they were coming because of how I was memorizing the Bible and I was reading the Bible from the head. I once memorized Matthew 1 to 28 and Revelation 1 to 22 from the head and I would sing the Bible from the head. So it fascinated them and I would invite them. And uh, so if I preach good or I, I write a good essay, I would always say, I want to start your master. That's what I say. I want to start your master. Okay, boom. And that's it. And I would always say, this would be my first car. Guess what became my first car? Mazda 626. I got it. I didn't have a driver's license. I didn't even know how to drive. Because my words were prayer. Because prayer is not only confined in the closet. Prayer is what you say. Do you know why Zimbabwe is going through tough times because we have a thousand intercessors who sleep in the mountain praying for Zimbabwe and during the day they will say ah Zimbabwe is going is, is, is going into the mud ah Zimbabwe this Zimbabwe this and death and life is in your tongue so you pray and unpray so you're praying for your husband but when you are with your aunt you say I married a demon you are praying your prayer Am I preaching to someone? Someone say, but. Now, when you pray, believe that you received what you prayed for. There are things I'm not going to pray for ever again because I prayed for them and I have already received. Now, listen. Verse 25. But, somebody say, but. If you do not forgive your enemies, your father will not forgive you. Luke chapter 6, verse 28. Pray for your enemies. Forgive them, especially those who hate you and attack you. For so did they did to the prophets. Luke 6 verse 37. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Judge not and you shall not be judged. That girl, I don't trust her. I don't trust her. Judge not so that you may not be judged. That guy, I don't trust him. His perfume is too seductive. Judge not so that you may not be judged. Oh, that pastor is in trouble. I knew it. Judge not so that you will not be judged. Can you point a finger at me? Everyone, point, point your finger at me. How many fingers are pointing at you? How, how many are pointing at me? One. It's one. The other one is pointing at God. And three are pointing at you. Judge not so that you may not be judged. Can I have 10 more minutes? You want your prayer to be answered? Learn to speak good things about the people. Do you know that gossip is the devil's intercession? Satan is the biggest intercession team in the world. Gossip is the devil's intercession. And jealousy is Satan's love. Jealousy means... I hate you because I have reasons that you don't deserve the good things that you have. Jealousy is when you have reasons somebody does not deserve to be who they are. Jealousy is when you have adequate reasons why this girl should not be married to this one. Because she does not deserve you. That's jealousy. Jealousy is you are only jealous of people you know Bezos says $200 billion. Are you jealous of him? No, you're praising him because you don't know him. But if he was your brother, <laughs> may God have mercy on us. So jealousy means I, I hate you because you don't deserve what you, you have. Then jealousy grows to envy. Envy means I don't only hate you because of what you have, I'll stop you. Then you start gossiping. Gossip is character assassination, slander, the devil's language. Slander the devil's language. You want to know somebody as a devil? Slander. Do you know the devil also comes to church? Yes. How do you know the devil is in church? There's no church place where people are slandered than the church. A witch's convent 
won't slander each other. I've never heard any witch who fought another witch because the other one took a drumstick and left fingers for the other. We've never heard of such in the H Metro. Prostitutes are not jealous of one another. Thieves are not jealous of one another. It's in church. Church is the beehive of gossip. And gossip is prayer. Envy. So, when you are jealousy of your sister, you are telling God that I don't deserve what she has. God does not answer you if you are going to use your blessing to hurt someone or prove a point. You were like, hey, man. Now look at you. Jesus says, have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? And in WrestleMania, they say rated 18. No under 18. Then, 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 then ZBC, they say any inconvenience cost is sincerely regretted. Turn to your neighbor and say any inconvenience cost sincerely regretted. I'm helping you and don't switch off on Facebook. We're about to finish. What Jesus means when he put a bat to every prayer. In Luke, he inserted a bat. In Matthew 9, but. In Mark 11, but. He kept repeating, if you don't forgive that hot-headed, unrepented, aloof, egocentric, I won't put a name to it, who will never say sorry. If you don't forgive him and pray for him, Father, bless this man. Give him a new heart. Take away his madness. Father, bless him. If you don't forgive and pray for your enemy, what happens? The Father will not forgive you. I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. For when you forgive somebody, you are not blessing the person. You are doing favor to yourself. And number two, God does not answer people who are praying out of greed. Your sister buys a Range Rover. You fast three days and three nights. Why, God, am I the only one suffering in this family? God is not going to answer you when you are praying out of greed. Selfishness. God does not answer selfish people. God does not give people favor because they have a longer nose. God favors people because of their heart. David have I chosen a man after my own heart. Didn't have a PhD, didn't have a master's, but the heart. Do you know why Zimbabwe is a very complicated country. We are very intelligent. We, are very, we have a high literacy rate. But Zimbabweans are selfish. By nature. When a Zimbabwean is driving and there's a traffic jam, it's rush hour. The traffic light turns green. He's on the cell phone. When it's ember, he speeds up and he locks you up. Oksungi Rajin. That's a Zimbabwean for you. Zimbabweans, naturally, Zimbabweans are selfish. If I'm from Mashingo, I give pre first preference to Mashingo people only. If I'm from Manika land, I give first preference to Manika land people only. Zimbabweans are selfish by nature. South Africans are xenophobic, but Zimbabweans are selfish. A Zimbabwean thinks about himself, himself, and himself. Zimbabweans are selfish. And God does not answer the prayers of selfish people. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Why did David write that? Because he took Bathsheba. After he took Bathsheba, he killed the husband. After killing the husband, Bathsheba gave birth and the child was sick and was about to die. Then he went on three days, three nights fasting and was lying on his stomach for three days straight, thinking the baby would survive and the baby died. Then he understood, if I regard iniquity in my heart, 
doesn't matter how much I fast, God does not hear me. The Holy Spirit may be talking to you, helping somebody here. Helping somebody. Early morning, I was selecting all the clothes I haven't put on for the past six months so that I find someone to give because I was scared when God was talking to me because I was asking myself a question, Java, are you selfish? Java, are you selfish? If, if, if you don't have one dependable in your life, one disadvantage dependable in your life, it doesn't matter how much you're making. It doesn't matter how little. It may be difficult for a prayer to get back up. Selfishness. Selfishness. Below, behold, the hands of God are not short to save. God is not immediate. His ears are not deaf not to hear. Isaiah 59 verse 2. But, everyone say but. Your sins and your iniquities have separated you from God. God does not answer selfish people. If every man in here is given a GLE 500 Blue Tech Mercedes and $5,000 with a full tank. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy on us. God does not answer selfish people. And number four, God does not answer stubborn people. Number four, God does not answer the prayers of a stubborn person. Everyone says stubborn. Okay, let me pull my trousers. Ah, I Is this time correct? I still have some, some time, eh? Okay, let me, let, me, let me say something. Um, I'm out of time. I'm finishing quickly. Lord, help me to unload this. God does not answer. You know, there are three stages at which God answers prayer. God answers prayer number one at the realm of sovereignty. His sovereignty. I don't care what you think, I'll do it. I don't care who helps you or not. I'll do it. He's sovereign. That's the first stage at which God answers prayer. Everyone says sovereign. Then number two, God answers prayer at angelic level. He sends angels, invisible ones, to help you. I prayed for one elder at Apostle Sibia's church last week. He had paid me a visit. He was going for a funeral in Rusape. Then he told me, uh, he had come to see me as his, as his man of God because I'm letter to Apostle Sibia by ministry. And when he was leaving, I said, let me pray for you, please kneel down. And I began to rebuke accidents. I began to rebuke death and accidents. Then he phoned me when you were still at the funeral and said, Apostle Java, you won't believe this. And Apostle Sibia's elder said, as we were driving, the driver was in 120 in the Wonder Feet and did not see that is the T junction. So he, he passed through the T, uh, uh, T junction and the car actually literally flew in the, in the air. He said, we literally felt it was in the air and begin, began to go into the bush but didn't hit a tree, yet they, they couldn't maneuver back into the road when they were pushing the car back and they couldn't put together how they missed all the trees in. Somebody say angels. They are real. They are real. Then number three, God answers you at the realm of relationship. Somebody say relationship. At the realm of relationship, God answers you. At the realm of relationship, God answers you. Do you know that God has given us all the money we need to finish the church building? But somebody is resisting to give 200, to give 500, to give 2,000. Somebody is resisting. Right here. Somebody is resisting, saying, no, my, my yellow bone will be snatched if I don't marry in December. Let, let me keep all the money I have. Somebody is resisting. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Somebody say resistance. Do, do you know that God has given us money to pay all the bills for this month? But somebody in this church right now is resisting. You, you felt it that you must give $80, but you calculated and say, ah, no. It won't be enough for my chicken and beef through the month. Somebody say resistance. L let me know this. 
Relationships. Somebody say relationship. Okay, I want to show you that God is innocent in many of the things you accuse him. Is there anyone here, you have somebody, your friend or relative in your inbox, who today you can ask for 1,000 US dollars and you give you. Ask, not lend. Ask and you just say, yes, 1,000, my brother. If you have such a person, raise your hands up. Few people. I have people who, if I ask them for $1,000 tonight, they'll give me. So some of the things you pray for, I want. Somebody say relationships. You will never achieve a lot in the material world if you are a prayer warrior, but you are socially incompatible. All right. I'm a pastor. I don't speak names when I'm giving examples because a pastor should have the most privacy. Uh, even if you kill the person, I will never tell the police if you confess to me. We are trained to do that. But I want to give you this example because one of the most difficult counseling sessions is between couples. Now, a woman and her husband had a fight. So, I heard there is an emergency, Apostle Mr. and Mrs. So and so said they want to see you. It's an emergency. I said, okay, let them come. So they came. True story, right? It's not an imagination. True story. Then the, the wife was, I, I said, state the issue. The wife said, Taura, said. Then the husband said, okay, I came from work and me, I like warm food. So I asked my wife to give me food because on Saturdays, the maid is off. So she gave me warm rice, but the stew was cold. So I said, can you warm the stew? And she threw a tantrum and we started fighting. Then at the end, she took the food and threw it in the bin and said, you said this food is uneatable, so it belongs to the dustbin. Now, these people speak in tongues. Sorry, people of God, eh? you are helping me to preach today. So I, I won't go deeper than speaking in tongues. Listen carefully. So the spirit of patience came upon me, and I asked, okay, mama, why didn't you warm the rice and the stew? She said, no, I warmed the rice, and the rice will warm the stew. Aish! Have you ever heard Nigerian say, Aish! I'm finished. So I said, Mama, where have you seen it that rice warm the stew? This science is beyond Japan, Samsung, Google. They are not at the level of this science. Where has it ever happened, Mama? Says, no. Rice can warm the stew. You mix it. You mix it. I said, but mama, ha, ah, you are wrong there. Then the husband started blowing. Yes, you are wrong. So to, to bring a balance, I said, okay, why didn't you go and warm the stew yourself? You said, why couldn't you just go and do it yourself than to have your food thrown in the dustbin? So the argument wasn't ending. It wasn't ending. So since the argument wasn't ending, I said, I'm going to pray only for the person who apologizes. Then when you corner a woman in counseling, she starts crying. So mama cried. She's a good, good woman, good woman. She's going to be a big leader in the next leadership meeting. Because she's a good woman. So mama cried. Because women, they feel what's not being said. And you think they are crazy. But she's feeling the truth. <laughs> so mama cried. And uh, at the end of the day, Baba apologized. Then mama smiled. Then they reconciled. Then we agreed that either you warm your own food if mama again makes rice warm stew. <laughs> or mama will warm both. So that was the conclusion. Why am I telling you this? Many people 
cannot relate with serious people because of one weakness, arguments. I'm talking about prayer here, arguments. Argument, apostle, means resistance. Arguments means resisting you with words. And I've never seen anyone who wins an argument. Because for an argument to end, someone has to say, okay, whatever you are saying is true, but don't think this person repented. No one wins an argument. No one. Argument is resisting, is stubbornness. And what does the Bible say in 1 Samuel 15? It says, it says uh, 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 disobedience is like, it didn't say it's witchcraft, it's like the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is like, what is stubbornness like? It's like rebellion. So, when someone is argumentative, that person is he's, he's, he, he is a resistor. So what happens is, your boss says, we are changing the business model to this. You say, ah, boss, this is a wrong idea. And you are right, he is wrong. Then boss says, ah, no, 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 this is a good idea. That's what you are doing. You say, no, that's not it. Then you go, you call everyone at the camera and say, no, what he's saying does not make sense. This will not work. You start resisting. Then Papa prays in tongues, alphanumeric, heavens, heavens, hack, uh, uh, um, what does white garments say? Construction, constant refiner, Gloria, heaven, Israel, Orishan, Kudenga Kunamari put all job breaking tongues together and it doesn't work because 90% of heaven answers is through relationships. R right now we are, we, are, we are putting our Bible school online and a friend of mine, a bishop, Bishop Mutungwazi, came and said, I have about eight students in Botswana. I want to give you all those students if you put your online to work. Relationships. We'll be training 80 pastors. Because of what? Relationships. Listen very carefully. So, heaven can decide. Angels can transport. A human being will resist. But God answered the prayer. So, let's say, do you know what Mobutu Seseko did? Mobutu. The great hero of Congo. Who changed Congo to Zaire. Right. Mobutu Seseko sponsored a space ship, a rocket to go to space. <laughs> Are you getting this? Now, what do you do if your leader is saying, we want to make a rocket that will go to space? To do what, sir? Because the white people and the Chinese, they go to space to just see what it is like and come back. Neil Armstrong, what did he do in space? He just saw and came back. All right. So, in the village, people are starving, Papa. Why make a rocket? So, I'm sure someone tried to advise him. Right? And when he, if he insists, let's make a rocket, what do you do? You are subordinate. You say, yes, say, I think you are right. Let's do it. And you do it wholeheartedly. I've given you a secret for a promotion. When, when the CEO says, we are now putting our money into, into, let's buy stones, granite, granite stones. Let's buy granite stones. Let's stop this business. And you calculate and it doesn't make sense. Don't argue. Don't resist. Give him sense. If he refuses, don't resist. Say, yes, sir. I'll make sure it comes to pass. That's your secret for promotion. You want your wife to be happy? You want your wife to be happy? Don't argue. Say, honey, you have the wisdom of the ancients. <laughs> the tongue of the learned. I understand. Mm -mm, honey, you are brilliant. This one, uh-uh. Sweetheart, you are brilliant. If you want peace in your house. 
Mama, if you want peace in your house, don't say yes, sir. Don't say ndazwinzwa. Say yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. Ah, daddy, I, I get you now. I get you now. No, you are not a master's for nothing. You are not masters in corporate governance. I will. That you are not a masters for nothing. You have won. Don't resist. Are you with me? Don't resist. I discovered when I was maturing in the Lord that whatever God compelled me to give and I resisted, I lost it. Everything God pushed me, help this person, give this person $800. I want you to do it. Then you calculate and it's not making sense and you refuse, you lose it. Yeah, uh, man of God, my son, my son right now has running stomach and is producing blood. Then you give the money. Okay, Murora, how is the child? No, the child is not sick. But your husband said this. No, he ran away from me. He's with another woman. You, 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 you lose money in ways like that. Don't resist. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stingy. Don't ignore the poor. Don't gossip and slander people because you are sowing a bad seed. Don't be jealousy. Celebrate people who are succeeding in any way. Don't investigate. Is it drugs? Is he doing drugs? Don't investigate. Celebrate. Don't be selfish. Learn to be selfless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you give me offering and tithe two dollars, I'll preach like this. You give me two thousand, I'll preach like this. You give me twenty thousand, I'll preach like this. Because I'm preaching like this as a result of who I am. Love is not about how you are being treated. Love is about who you are. So love and the character of the person loving are one. God is loving you from who he is, not who you are. If God loved you for who you are, do you think you'll be here today? So the challenge is you want him to change so that you can love him better. He will never change so that your love be better. You love him enough until your love breaks him. Somebody say resistance. So, Joseph is crying to God for deliverance. And God puts him in slavery. What do you do when you are crying for deliverance and God escalates the issue from the pit to the Ishmaelites to Egypt to slavery? Whenever jo Joseph was crying to God, it got worse. But the worse it got, the closer he got to his destiny. When you cry to God and the landlord doubles the rental, your prayer is being answered. You respond with worship. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a condition that stabilizes you on the fact that God is true to his word and cannot lie. So, I've seen from experience when you say, Father, change my finances. I want to do more for you. I want to build 40 churches. I want to buy a PA system that, that can pick my voice even 10 meters away. Father, I want a revival in Harare. Father, I want to win 10,000 souls per year. Father, fulfill what you said 10 years ago. The church will split. Someone who think church is a software to make money will poison eight people. Ah, this man is not a good man. This man is this, this man. You saw he was wearing a Gucci suit, shoe and a Versace suit. This man is not a good man. He's on the road to be like one of the prophets. Let's leave. God showed me this church has no future. In two years it will fall. Let's start ours. Then someone start his. And it will be someone you love. You are only hurt by the people you love. Joseph is sold by his own brothers, the people he loved. That's how it hurts. When that happens after seven days, seven nights fasting for church growth, God has answered you. God has answered you. Joseph prayed to be delivered by God and restored back to his father. 
And God delivered him and gave him into slavery. Hands tied. Pushed by a camel. Feet sore. Eating rubbish. Crying and crying. Crying and crying. And the feather he cried, the feather he got away from his father. But when he prayed, he expected God to send angels and deliverance. When you pray, sometimes prayer will take you from the pit to slavery. And that's when your faith fails. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is not faith until it's tested. Because it's not a feeling. It's not bravado. It's not confidence. It's the assurance that ABJ is called to raise the dead. It is the assurance that ABJ is called to speak to millions of people the way of God. Now, when you believe like that, and you trust God enough, then you are betrayed, you are stabbed and stabbed. God is answering you. True fasting, you can confirm, when it ends, issues escalate. And many, they fail, and that's why your faith falls. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. What happened? Judas kissed him. What happened? He was put in Caiaphas' courtroom. What happened in Caiaphas' courtroom? Peter denied him three, three times. What happened after Peter denied him? They blindfolded him and the Plutonian guards begin to beat him saying, prophesy will beat you. Then they put a crown of thorns on his head. Then they took him to th uh, uh, three miles away, 4.8 kilometers to Pontius Pilate's house. From Pontius Pilate's house, 4.8 kilometers to Herod's house, then another 4.8 kilometers back to Pontius Pilate's house in one night, and his last supper was 5 p.m. the previous day at the last supper. He's dehydrated. He's hungry. He's sweating. He has been deserted and rejected by his disciples. He's being beaten. He's being shamed and humiliated. The Holy Spirit has left him because he's now carrying sin. And diseases and symptoms are now popping up because he's carrying all our diseases. Now, but he prayed in Gethsemane. When he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, who came? And do you think Satan comes to boost your ego and confidence? Now, Jesus is beaten by the Roman tribe. 39 lashes with sheep bone, which has metallic hooks, which sinks into your, your flesh and roots out the, 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 the cell membrane or the skin membrane to open up your white membrane. And he's in a hypervolemic shock. And the man is walking two miles to Golgotha and is on a cross. He's hanging on three nails behind two thieves. Suppose you are driving. You're driving. You are driving. The people drive nice cars here. You are driving your your, your Ford Ranger. Man of God, you're driving your Ford Ranger and you see people gathered and three boys hanging on a on a tree. You are a researcher, Mr. Jiri. You see three boys hanging naked on, on nails, spat on, beaten, mocked. Then you say, what's happening over there? You are in your twin cab, Hilux. You, you are asking, what happened? Then they say, uh, the guy in the middle said he is God. He says, he's God. He created me and you. Yes. Why is he hanging there? People did not believe him, so they, are, they beat him up and they are crucifying him. If he's God, why can't he send lightnings and Michael and Gabriel to defend him? That we don't understand. What, what do you think? You say he's out of his mind. They would have forgive, should have forgiven him. He's out of his mind. Right? That's the, the logical thing to say. But your situation does not determine your revelation. Because the devil is only in your situation. But who you are does not change by what you are going through. He is still the Messiah. Come three days later and you see. Say, if your faith fails not, three days later they will see. 
When you pray from the pit, Judah will sell you into slavery. When you pray for promotion, Potiphar's wife will throw you into prison. When you pray for deliverance, the butler will forget you. And every obstacle is pushing him. And your battle determines what you are carrying. What you are carrying is not small. The power you are carrying is not small. The turnaround of events is, 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 is shocking. It's cataclysmal. Therefore, your pain has to, be, has to be deep. Zimbabwe is blessed. Africa is blessed. Nigeria is blessed. Don't judge Nigeria but what she's going through. Nigeria is going through this because people have been praying. And people who don't understand spiritual puzzles, they will think God has forsaken them or prayer was not heard. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen. When David was anointed, bears and lions came. Giants came. What did you do to your giants? Your situation is totally nothing before God than your reaction to the situation. It is your reaction and how you take the situation that's more cata uh, catastrophic than the situation itself. Because God will never allow you to go through what you cannot overcome. 1 Timothy Corinthians 10 verse 13. And even if it means it overwhelms you, all things work together. For who? For good. To who? To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Nine months later, out Jesus comes in a manger. And the magis are coming with gold. Coming with gold. Are coming with Mura. Frankincense. He's going on exile to Egypt. But the trip is already funded. He comes back. 30 years later, he's turning water into wine. He's walking on water. And who is the hero now? Mary is the hero. Mary, your son, raised Lazarus from the dead. Mary, what is the next miracle to happen? Tell us the next heavenly gist. Sister, buy me a chicken and I'll tell you. He told me when he was young. He said, you die and in three days you rebuild his temple. Mary, my son will die. Sister, my son will die and will rise back from the dead. He said, you choose 12 apostles. And he said, there'll be the foundation of the church. Do you know what my son said? He said, he's building me a mansion in the penthouse of the new Jerusalem. Yes. The Mary who suffered humiliation, whose parents did not buy her preparation, who didn't have money to check into a hospital for delivery, gave birth in front of animals and pigs. That Mary, who is she now? Ask the Pope. Who is she now? Ask Vatican. Who is she now? Ask ABJ. She's wrapped in glory. She is favored above all women. My sister, if you understand the ways of God, if you understand why you cried in the pit and became a slave, you are going to be the viceroy of Egypt. He says to his brothers, gentlemen, the Bible says he, he, he said every Egyptian get out and all Egyptians got out and says I am Joseph then they refused they could not recognize him because, because by the end of COVID by the end of 2020 they, they will not recognize you they call you cheap girl they gossip and slander about you but you, you're going to get the man. You're going to get the girl. The right girl. The Boaz and the Ruth. Can I prophesy to you? You're looking for a job. You will employ. You will employ. He can turn every stone to a diamond if he wants. He can cause a gold rush to be in your communal farm if he wants. One check from God will change your skin color. 
one door from God will change your family history. One stone in the desert will kill a giant. One word in a crisis will destroy the Moabites, Amalekites, and the Mount Seers before Jehoshaphat. One encounter in the burning bush can free a whole nation called Israel. It will not take God a year to change your story. It will not take him 10 years. But, 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 but he's saying prayer is dealing with you first. And you must be patient to allow prayer to deal with you. Zimbabwe, prayer is dealing with you first. Prayer is dealing with you. Can, can you handle the blessing? Can you handle it? God is not choosing Joseph because he's the most handsome. God is not choosing Joseph because he's the firstborn. He's choosing Joseph because of his heart. He chases the Egyptians and he cried out and says, I am Joseph. Somebody shout and say, I'm Joseph. Somebody shout until the devil knows yet and say, I'm Joseph. I'm not going to die until I build those churches. I build that university until I make you a leader. You are not going to die until you prove them wrong you are going to prove them wrong you are going to prove them wrong you know when God loves you he goes to lengths he can kill for you ask Pharaoh ask Pharaoh Ramesses the second he can kill and when God kills it's not murder my brother when God blesses you ask Solomon when God elevates you ask David Ask Esther, this one, 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 Kanemondi Achai Kotere, Karabataya Kaskanda, this one, Kanoni Ashia Katea, Robante Kasia, the battle is not yours, the battle is not yours, the battle is not yours, the battle is not yours. I want to tell every Muroi. I want to tell every Hakata. I want to tell every Osh Kataeko Sambati Eke Labahasa. I want to tell every Chitoma, every Stokoloshi. I want to tell every Mofu, every Chihera. I want to tell every Machuma, every Madube, every Masisba. I want to tell every Nyati. I want to tell every Maymate. I want to tell every queen of the coast, queen of the air, queen of the land. I want to tell every HR director, executive. I want to tell the MD today. I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger on your behalf. I want to tell them those ancestors. I want to tell them that Mira. I'm Joseph. I'm Joseph. He answers prayer. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Do you know what it means? God's phone number. There is one boy. One boy. He has tons of energy. If I get out of that energy, I'll preach, a, I'll preach 70 sermons in a week. We'll be doing this saying, Hello, Mari. Hello, Mari. Have you seen that boy? Have you seen... I'm sorry those were born before 19, after 1970, before 970, you may not understand. There's a boy called Haro Mari, Haro Mari. Have you ever heard that? Then there is a prophet who, who made a phone call to God. Did you hear a prophet who made a phone call to, <laughs> to God and said, Hello, is this heaven? Have you ever heard about that? Because in Africa, there's nothing you don't see. That's the blessing of being a black man. You see everything. If you're a black man, everything you see them. Everything. Now, God really has a phone number. But it's not Econet. It's not Voda. It's not MTN. It's 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 333. Call unto me and I'll answer you. I'll show you great and hidden things. Ah. Ah. Mitzimu ine simba. Mitzimu ine simba. Mashikiro ane simba. Mikozine Simba, Ma Auta Ane Simba. I see Jehovah. 
Asi Jehovah. Asi Jehovah. Asi Jehovah. Havanyatsi square. Havanyatsi square. Havanyatsi square. Havanyatsi square. Jehovah vakasumudza mporofita uyu ne uyu vanokusumudza. Vakasumudza bishop uyu ne uyu vanokusumudza. Vakachatisa uyu ne uyu vanokuchatisa. Vakarodza uyu ne uyu vanokurodza. They are saying une mudzimu haurorwe. They are saying une njuzu haurorwe. They are saying une nyoka kuhope haurorwe. Cheova. I'm Joseph. You meant it for, for evil. But God meant it for good. Every Egyptian get out. I need to talk to my people. Says I need to talk to my people. Do you know why he chased Egyptians? Do you know why he chased Egyptians? Because Israelites were the only people circumcising their children. So they could not believe his Joseph. And the Bible says, then he took off his clothes. Why is he stripping? He's not no high on alcohol. He's saying, I want you to see my private pain. The pain I couldn't tell the prophet. The pain I couldn't tell the pastor. The pain I couldn't tell my uncle. The pain I couldn't tell my friends. I just sat down and started crying because I'm a public hero, but a private, private, private. I'm in my Gethsemane. It's a private pain. I can't shed. Peter, you can't understand this. Stuff. But at the place of your most private pain, in the crucible of your most private suffering, manifest your biggest gift. And your biggest blessing. He says, look, I'm circumcised. Egyptians don't circumcise. You know, when you're circumcised, you are wounded. When you're wounded, you bleed. You are crying because the wound is too fresh. But fresh wounds do heal. And when they heal, they leave a scar. The scar is a reminder that pain used to be there. They will be reminded that you got divorced. They could be reminded that he treated you like trash. They will be reminded that she lied on you. They will be reminded that they fired you but you were innocent. They will be reminded that you were anointed but they delayed you. Because God is leaving a scar and I am Joseph. You were jealous. Reuben, you couldn't defend me. The birthright was always yours. You were the firstborn. Judah, you are the one who is going to produce kings. Do, do, don't you know that I'm, I'm your brother? And you're actually the one who is going to produce kings. Levi, you are the one who is going to produce priests. All of you are blessed. Why are you hating on me? Because they are hate on him. It's a blessing from God. And I'm looking and I'm speaking to thousands of miracles right now. Because the anointing of God is sitting upon my spirit to prophesy to somebody that you are crying in the pit and the answer is slavery. But don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Hang on and keep giving him the glory. Worship him when it doesn't make sense. Worship him when you are bleeding, hurt and unhealed. Worship him. Don't be bitter. Forgive him for what he said. Weeping men sure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Lift up your hands. We have to go home at the end of the day. Raise your hands. And those who are watching, raise your hands before we go home. Raise up your hands. I love Mary. I love Mary. When Jesus was 30, she came and said, we don't have wine at the wedding. I remember after my husband Joseph died and I was a widow. 
you prayed for cooking oil like what Elijah did in Zarephath and we, we, cooking oil, we never ran out of cooking oil. I remember you prayed for water and we had wine. So, produce a miracle. And Jesus says, woman, my time has not come. Don't be rude at me, my son. I carried you nine months and you didn't tell me when to come out. So, I know when your time for miracles has started because I knew when to bring you out after carrying you for nine months. Then she turned and says, whatever he says, do it. And she walked away. And there was wine. And there was wine. I'm your Mary today. And your pain is determining what you are caring for your sisters, what you are caring for your brothers, what you are caring for people who are hating you. Your pain is determining that. You are a great prophet. Come here. Your season is coming. Don't lose it. Because your trial is going to be great. Because a great thing is going to be born out of you. And you, your season is coming. A dramatic turn of events in the year 2021 is going to shoot out your gift. To shoot out your gift. Because since P.D. Chuesha left this nation and went to be with the Lord, the mantle of evangelism is still in the atmosphere. And it's you who is getting that mantle. It's you. Can the Holy Spirit pray for you 60 seconds? We are Pentecostals. Uh, we are Pentecostals. So if you are a Protestant, please understand because we pray differently. So I will allow the Holy Ghost to pray through me because you are Joseph. You are Joseph. You are bringing your family to Goshen. You are bringing your father to safety. Lang se proces salik robastle trasto lere trestim vali treskal traston tes kliri treste fadri star rathros tes salira trestisten tara Litron tres talitre stacle crostate, fatelo aletrostic mulare tristi feterala, liro claro halibas clare, litresta fetru fanila rotristinali, le rotresti fatre, la hoc le rifatre, la ho le rifrate, le rifatre, le rifatre, li hale revoschi alar, falei le hiros cantriste nac le triste. Havalia holere tri hase, la hulere tri fale halero hole li harasente. The right hand of God is upon you. Mr. Japa Japa, a hand is on your chest right here. It's a, it's, a, it's a hot hand, red hot. This hand that holding you is erasing a long history. And is starting a new wave in your life. Where you rebuke poverty and people who succeed. And you be an evangelist in the streets. That's your place in the streets. And your season of comfort starts today. And in the next 12 months you turn around and say, Where was I in 2020 October? And you not recognize yourself. May the Lord bless you. Give me your hand. In the name of Jesus. Receive strength. Total strength. Receive the miracle of God. In Jesus name. So tomorrow Revelation Talk 130. www.abjtv.com net and apostle b java ministries facebook page may the lord god bless you may the lord keep you may he protect you may you continue going up and may no weapon formed against you prosper in jesus name